guys, it was so. This is place the movie fan. And let me give you some context. By the beginning of this year, the mysterious Mr. Hunter made a video titled Top 10 Worst Cartoons of the 2010s. And out of all those shows, the only two that I have seen a lot of episodes of are the Pop Calls 2016 and Family Guy. So, I will be covering those entries. Also, I was going to upload this video much sooner. I apologize to everyone that it took me so damn long. So, yeah, anyway, without further ado, let's dive in. Starting with his entry on Pop Calls 2016. So I plead with you, my plaza folks, please turn in all of your remotes. We can make the plaza safe for all. So what do you say? Let's end this brawl. It's party time! <laughs> I'm just going to cut to the chase on this one. The Powerpuff Girls 2016 is one of the few shows out there that makes me feel legitimately unclean. Wow, a show that barely has anything offensive in it. It's one of the few shows that makes you feel legitimately unclean. Now look, I totally get how the pedophilic undertones are a problem. I will be getting into that later. But aside from that, is there really anything in the show that can be considered offensive? Not that I can think of. So it makes no sense that this is one of the few shows that makes you feel legitimately unclean. A lot of shows I've reviewed in the past, I've been too angry, getting shouty and ranty for no good reason. However, every so often, there's a show that I feel that I should have been much harsher on. And the Powerpuff Girls reboot is one of the most prime examples in my mind. So, you regret getting angry in your review of... Seth MacFarlane's cartoon skit, which by the way has some things that can be considered legitimately offensive, but he decided to instead get angry at the Publicals reboot, which barely has anything offensive in it. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, Enter. That logic is backwards as hell. You can't say that you regret getting too angry at something just to get angry at something even more harmless. Furthermore, this creates a new problem. You know what this proves to be? This proves that your anger isn't acting and it's completely legitimate. And that is beyond said. If you truly get legitimately angry at piece of fiction, please seek some mental help because you aren't right in the head at all. Now of course I wouldn't mind if you were just acting angry for the sake of a character. The nostalgia critic and Firmaster Adam are some of my favorite movie reviewers on the internet. And when they get angry in the reviews, they are clearly acting. And I can tell, they never get legitimately upset at a movie. You, however, prove that you do, which again is beyond said. This show disgusts me in ways that Seth MacFarlane only wishes he could. Then why the hell is Family Guy higher up on the list? Yeah, that is a big problem that I have with this countdown. The Power Girls reboot should be at the top of the list. And I'm not saying this because I agree with Mr. Hunter. I don't. I love the Power Girls reboot. I'm saying this because based off what he says in his countdown, it should be at the fucking top. I mean, let's quickly go over the three entries that top this. With the number 3 entry, he only has one major problem with the show. In fact, he has more negative things to say about the Power Girls reboot. At the number 2 entry, he actually praises a few aspects. And the number 1 entry shouldn't be on the list in the first place. More on that when we actually talk about the entry. But yeah, it makes absolutely no sense that this show doesn't top your list. I would still disagree with the choice, but at least that way... The ranking would match off with what you say. Seriously, it makes no fucking sense that it's not at the top. Remember the episode that I reviewed, Painbow? It had six-year-old girls twerking, and twerking is generally known as a very sexual dance. A lot of people commented on my original video basically saying that, nah uh twerking is actually based on an African fertility dance, and I'm all like, you you do know what fertility means, right? Well, if you don't know, it, it kinda has something to do with sex. Alright, before I comment on what you see at here, there's one thing that I did in the past, more specifically when the show was new, was I regret. I shouldn't have defended the twerking scene in paintball. Because looking back at it, it's indefensible. Shit like that is not appropriate in kids' cartoons. Hell, I wouldn't even say that they are appropriate in adult cartoons. Paraphilia is obviously wrong. I didn't realize that back then. 
But now I do. With that being said, this is a legitimate problem that you have with the show. And you're absolutely right. The pedophilic overtones are indefensible. And that is a perfectly legitimate reason to hate the show. So I will give you credit for that. Well, after that, after everyone complained about the show having six-year-old girls twerking, do you know what the show did? They brought Allegro back in another episode called Somewhere Over the Swing Set. And then, after everyone and their grandmother complained about the twerking and explained why it was incredibly perverted for this show to do, this show had these six-year-old girls twerk again. It's clear that they are doing it to troll the critics who complained about it. I must admit, though, that doesn't justify it. It's still a very fucking messed up thing to do, I agree. And then we had the infamous Jared Shapiro incident. Yeah, Doodle Toes already did a good job debunking that horse yet. If you want more information, a link to her video is in the video description below. This is a very specific kind of bad. This is not only a thing that grown ass adults shouldn't do, this is the kind of thing that you shouldn't have to tell grown ass adults that they should not do. You know, I feel the exact same way about people who think that deplatforming over a different political opinion is okay. It should be common fucking sense that you do not deplatform others because they have a political opinion that you don't like. But there are some fucking morons out there that not only think that it's okay, but they also celebrate when someone they don't like gets wrongfully terminated. That is fucking disgusting, and those morons should feel ashamed of themselves. I'm not saying that anyone behind the show is a pedophile. Let me make that very clear. And I will give you credit for that. You are being fair. Power of Girls 2016 has all the bad aspects of the 2010s, with none of the good aspects. Then why the hell isn't it at the top of the list? This point right there further proves my point that it should be. This show clearly wanted to cash in on the whole idea of girl power, a common selling point in the 2010s. I mean, isn't that exactly what the original Power of Girls show did too? I mean, sure, it was a bit for the money. But girls being strong and powerful was basically the entire fucking point of the original show as well. So that show has as much to do with girl power as this one does. For example, I've never seen a show that claimed to be feminist actively despise the female anatomy. You remove Miss Keen's breasts and then you sent away Miss Bellum because hers were too big. May I ask why? Oh, that's right, because Miss Bellum isn't a message that you wanted to give to little girls. You want them to be ashamed of the bodies that they might grow into. Completely understood. Actually, it's totally understandable. Big tits don't belong in kids' cartoons. So making her tits less visible makes complete sense. And no, it has nothing to do with making women feel quote ashamed or anything like that. You're just digging too deep into this. This show is disgusting. I've said that before, but I, I have to keep saying it. Not only is this show disgusting, it's disgusting in the worst morally abhorrent way. I mean, you make mostly new points throughout the entry. This entry has a lot of problems, that goes without saying. But being redundant is not one of them. Girl power! Our heroes are constantly bickering terrible people, and they constantly get captured, needing to be rescued by the men, including the mayor, on multiple occasions. Aren't you forgetting? Stuff like that happened in the original show as well. In the episode of the Rough the Rough Boys, you know, the 20 minute long episode which introduces them, the Power Girls were very close to giving up. And they would have it if it wasn't for Mrs. Bellum. I know she's a woman, but gender shouldn't matter. It still happened. And in the episode Old Old Dynamo, the Power Girls would be fucking dead if it wasn't for Professor Tonyon's help. The only reason they could even beat that fucking monster was because of the huge ass robot that he made. And both of those episodes are from the first fucking season. So I'm not sure how he could have missed that. The Power Girls are not perfect. They needed to be rescued at several occasions in the original show as well. At the top of that, your point that the Power Girls always have to be rescued by a man in the reboot is complete bullshit. They do manage to get themselves out of any situations completely on their own in far more episodes than in other episodes where someone has to actually fucking rescue them. And gender is not a factor in whether or not the girls are rescued. Not in the original show, not in the reboot either. You ever hear that conspiracy about The Last Jedi that the guy behind it just wanted to destroy the Star Wars franchise? Unfortunately, even as a big fan of The Last Jedi, and I am a consider that movie a masterpiece, even I can't deny that some of the people working on The Last Jedi really fucking hate Star Wars. I wish I could debunk that, but I honestly can't. 
But hey, at the plus it at least they had new direction for the franchise. Which is something I appreciate for sure, and that's why I love the movie so much. I don't know if I believe that, but I believe that here. This show feels very much like intentional sabotage. It feels very much like the people behind the show hated the Powerpuff Girls and just wanted to destroy it by any means necessary. Do you have any proof for that? Because I refuse to believe such a huge claim without the evidence. Now to be fair, you do say that you think... That's how it's like. You're not saying that with absolute certainty. But even then, your theory is very flawed. I think the far more likely possibility is that the people who wrote the show wrote episodes that they thought would be good. And the story is good to them. I find that far more likely than the fact that they fucking hate the show and want to butcher it as much as possible. Now Teen Titans Go! is a show which I actually hate. And even then, what I said about the Powerpuff reboot does apply to that show as well to me. I mean think about it. Why the hell else would people write something if they didn't think it was good? Oh my god the professor. Why? Why is he like this? Why is he the stupidest character I've ever seen? I mean he doesn't act much differently from what he did in the original show. To me at least. But then again that's probably just my opinion. Actually you know what? Don't answer that, I know the answer. Cause girl power. Are you implying that the Power Girls reboot is a feminist propaganda? I sure as hell hope not, because I am so sick of that horror shit. I am so fucking sick and tired of people calling every movie Vogue, feminist propaganda or social justice warrior propaganda. And most of these videos are just an excuse to complain about pointless shit. Seriously, this bullshit needs to fucking stop. When you talk about a movie, talk about something that actually fucking matters. Not pointless shit that doesn't affect the quality of a movie. Or a show in this case, in the slightest. Congratulations Cartoon Network, I never want anything to do with this franchise ever again. At least with Teen Titans Go I can enjoy the original, and it's not going to have much of an effect on the future. Powerpuff Girls 2016 has tainted the franchise for me forever. And now I can't think of this franchise without getting skeeved out. Congratulations. Wow, that's beyond pathetic. You can't enjoy a show that you used to love anymore because an inferior version of it exists. Blaming the show for that is like blaming an inanimate object. No wait, it is an inanimate object because the show is not a fucking lie. I'm not saying that you think that, but it's still very fucking petty to let an inferior product Ruin your enjoyment for superior product. It's not the show's fault that you don't enjoy the old Purple Girl show anymore. It's your fault for being so fucking close-minded. Look, you can hate the show all you want, that's fine. And even though I enjoy the Purple Girl reboot, I would agree that the original show is far superior. Also, how would this be any different from hating the original Teen Titans show because of the fact that Teen Titans Go exists. There is no real difference. So you really have double standards. Which is nothing to be proud of by the way. Alright, I'm done with this entry on the Purple of Girls reboot. But before I move on to the Family Guy entry, there is one last thing that I want to say. If you want to see someone who criticizes the Purple of Girls reboot and does it fairly, I highly recommend you check out Shadow Streak. He currently has a goal of reviewing every episode of the Purple Girls reboot in existence, which is a good goal, and I'm not for him 100%. Now he is unfortunately someone who isn't well known, and I want to change that, which is why I'm recommending him. So check his channel out and tell him that Play sent you. As for what videos of his I recommend, Honestly, I would say fucking all of them. So far, he did a damn good job with all of his reviews. So just pick one of his reviews of an episode of the Popcorn Reboot, and I'm sure you will enjoy it. Trust me, you won't regret checking his channel out. With that being said, let's move on to the entry number one, Family Guy. So I plead with you, my plaza folks. Please turn in all of your remotes. We can make the plaza safe for all. So what do you say? This list has been filled with controversial opinions, I'm sure. However, I believe that number one on this list is going to be the most controversial show that I've ever picked. How can that be? I mean, I've just talked about almost everything in the book at this point. We talked about sexuality, trans rights, feminism, and even Donald Trump. Well, I mean, I mean, that's kind of unsurprising, though. I mean, it seems today that all you see is violence in movies and sex on TV. That guy sucked. 
Family guy doesn't belong on this list at all. I mean, don't get me wrong. I fucking hate that show too. In fact, I think it's one of the worst shows out there. But the reason it doesn't belong is because it's not a fucking 2000 tons show. Calling it a 2000 tons show implies the first episode was released in the 2000 tons, which is not true. It was first released in the 1990s. Therefore, Family Guy is a 1990s show. But all right, I will hear your reason out. Maybe you will have a good reason to include it on this list. Okay, so the first question is obvious. Does this even count? Yes, it does. It had more than 12 episodes in the 2010s. It counts, by my definition. Not only that, but it has been airing continually throughout the 2010s, year in and year out, getting worse and worse with every single episode. And the show is of vastly different quality from its run in the previous decades. 2010's Family Guy is not the same show as 2000's Family Guy. They are not even in the same ballpark. I'm sorry, but that's a terrible reason as to why it counts as a 2010 show. I mean, yes, Family Guy is vastly different in 2010 than before, but that doesn't make it a different fucking show. It's still the exact same show as it was when it started in the 1990s. The fact that it changed vastly doesn't make it a separate fucking show. That's fucking ridiculous. You know what other show is very different from the 2010s than it was before? SpongeBob SquarePants. That show has changed a lot. Are you gonna call that show a 2010s show as well? You should, otherwise I'm calling you out for double standard. Look, you only get one C or seashell party before you go on my permanent shit list. Your permanent shit list must be fucking huge, since you are so fucking negative in most of your videos. As a matter of fact, when was the last time you made an admirable animation? That was at least a fucking year ago. You know, there's one thing that I really miss about your channel. Even though animated atrocities have always been the main thing you made, you still occasionally made admirable animation. So there was balance between negativity and positivity. But now that balance is gone, you almost never make positive videos anymore. And that is beyond fucking sad, man. Focusing on almost nothing but negativity is not healthy at all. And I would love to see you being positive for a change. But it almost never happens nowadays, which again is beyond sad. Almost as demented as telling abuse victims that they have a purpose being a lightning rod for other people's terrible behavior. Now, I will admit something. I do regret defending this episode in the past. Now, you can't find the video where I did that anymore, because I deleted it from my channel a long time ago. But I did make the video in 2014. I defended it because I said that Meg being abused is the fucking point. Yeah, it was very dumb on my part, and I apologize. With that being said though, there is something that I want to say. The episode did not try to have the message that abuse victims should stay in abusive relationships for their abuser's benefit. In fact, it doesn't have a message at all. The point of the episode is that a fictional character, fictional being the keyword, is the one that's doing it. It's not at all trying to say that this applies to abuse victims in real life as well. Thinking that the episode has a message like that is taking a bit too deep into it. But mind you though, I agree that this is a fucking horrible episode. For those of you who don't know, I am talking about Seahorse Seashell Party. Let me calm down right now. If I had to say something to Seth MacFarlane himself, I have to say this. Please stop. Stop trying to be funny. You are not funny. You're not a comedian. Wow, that was a very dickish thing to say. And I don't mean that Seth MacFarlane is not funny. It's an opinion of the rule and you're entitled to it. No, I'm referring to when you say you're not a comedian. Holy shit, dude. Can you possibly sound any more condescending? I know that you want to entertain people and make them laugh, and that is definitely admirable. I've also heard that you do suffer from depression, so maybe you think that trying to be funny is all that you have. So, you admit that you know he suffers from depression? but decide to be an asshole towards him regardless? That actually makes it worse. You are not an untalented guy. You may have signs of doubt, but try something new for once. And I don't mean try something that isn't a cartoon. Please, try something that's not a comedy. Trying to do is exactly what he has been doing for most of the decade. Why else do you think that he doesn't write? for Family Guy anymore. Yeah, that's something that I need to address. He doesn't fucking write Family Guy anymore. In fact, he hasn't written for the show for most of the 
doesn't turn. So blaming him for it is completely stupid in every way possible. And the thing is, you shouldn't even need to do research to know this. This should be common fucking knowledge. And the fact that you didn't know this is beyond shared. Trust me, you do not want Family Guy to be the big thing that you're known for for the rest of history. I don't want that for you. And I hope to the fans that you don't want that either. That's not even close to the only thing that he's popular for. He has done a lot to help the animation industry. Dexter's Laboratory and Johnny Bravo are some of the most popular animated shows of all time. And they are both widely considered to be great. Seth MacFarlane is a huge reason why those shows turned the way they did. He did a lot to help those shows bang as fucking awesome as they are. These two shows wouldn't be as good as they are without his help. I figured this out without doing any research. I mean, I did research to double check, but this is something that I have known for fucking decades. And honestly, I'm shocked that you didn't know this. You watch far more cartoons than I do. You watch a lot of animated shows. Hell, that is what your channel is mostly focused around. So I find it very fucking shocking that you don't know this because you should know this. Now, I don't watch as many animated shows as you do. In fact, I mostly watch movies. That's what most of my channel revolves around. When someone who barely watches any animated shows compared to you knows this over you, that is beyond pathetic. Please, find a new act, and I will be there for you. But keep on this path, and I don't see it panning out in any positive way whatsoever. I appreciate you trying to be nice to Seth MacFarlane, but I don't buy that you are sincere about it at all. Throughout this video, my little clips that I skipped, you haven't just been passing Family Guy, but you've also been passing Seth MacFarlane throughout. So I don't believe for a second that you are legitimately trying to help the guy. If you really cared about helping the guy, you would have done some fucking research. You fucking hate Seth MacFarlane. It's obvious that you do. So just be honest about it. Alright, now that I'm done with the family guy entry, it's time for my overall thoughts. Now I'll be honest, when I first saw this video, I didn't think too much of it. Now I was going to respond to your entry on the Power Girls reboot since the start. But originally I was just going to explain why I disagree with your opinion on the Power Girls reboot. And I was going to say that the entry is still good overall. But the more I rewatched the entry, the more I realized just how fucking bad it is. You made a few good points, but for the most part it's hands down the worst take on the Power Girls reboot that I have ever seen. At least with most people who hate that show, I can see that the reasons are reasonable. But none of your points were reasonable in the slightest. I'm not saying that you're wrong for hating the show, but your anger really was unwarranted. As for your family country, well, I was originally just gonna skip it and just focus on your entry on the Power Girls 2016. But after Clay Claymore and Bro Broman responded to that entry, it made me realize that it's far worse than I originally thought. And mind you, this is coming from someone who fucking hates Family Guy too. But even someone who shares your opinion finds a lot of issues with an entry, that's just sad. I don't care that you have talked about Family Guy numerous times. That doesn't bother me. I don't care if points are redundant. I care more about if the points are good to begin with. And now that you made a lot of good points about Family Guy, being a complete asshole towards Seth MacFarlane was completely unwarranted. Especially since it didn't bother to do fucking research. So yeah, both of these entries were fucking horrible. Now, I'm gonna end this video by saying this. I'm not angry at you, Mr. Hunter. I'm just disappointed. Very, very disappointed. You have the potential to make great reviews. As a matter of fact, you have. Most of the reviews that you made between 2013 and 2014 were very good. Even though I didn't agree with all of them, they were at least reasonable. And hell, even today, you have made some good reviews, such as your review on The Simpsons episode, Bars vs. Itchy and Scratchy. I really don't know what the hell happened here. I know you were perfectly capable of making good points. So why the hell didn't you do it in either entries which I covered? I sincerely hope that you won't make something as disastrous as those two entries ever again. But unfortunately there is a chance that you will. So anyway people, you have reached the end of the video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.